Yo, it's Mel from Rap Rankings. To hear the full episode this clip comes from and all other Patreon exclusive content, visit patreon.com slash rap rankings. Track one, Rolls Royce Brake Lights. And I gotta say it, Stick or Mel's gotta say it. Mm-hmm. Stove God Cooks, why did you do this? Why did you misspell this? What do you mean? He said break, like you break something, like glass. Oh, instead of break as break. in B-R-A-K-E. Like, K-E, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed it this week, and I'm just like, and I'm like, am I going to correct it for that? I'm like, no, I can't correct. That's that is what he titled it, so I got to use that. Sure. But uh, believe me, folks, me being AP English male, that's not the reason why this got a six plus. Wow, your rating went down on this one. It did. Actually, I got Dude. my 2020 ratings pulled up here. It was a flat six, then it actually went up a little bit. Dude, my rating went down too. Seven minus. Okay. Ding me, baby. All right. Surf rock or just just surfer moves? Yeah, surfer moves. <laughs> <laughs> See now in the in the uh, what is it like the freaking queue of nonsense shirts I have in my brain? I want a surfer moves shirt now. I don't know why. I just want one. Um, look, this is. This is one in 2020 and now when it's like, I like a majority of this album. Spoiler. Mm. So you like want to add it on to the takeaways, but that's not the way enjoying music What do you mean you want to add it? What does that mean? You know how sometimes an album gets close to perfection? So you re-listen to like the one or two that didn't like, that you didn't like and like hoping to find an angle, you know, to put the album over it. But that's not how real rating works that's not how the truth is told it's like right. in 2020 this was an 11 out of 12 and this was the only song i didn't like mm-hmm. and you keep going back to it you're like come on you're one away from perfection like i gotta like it but no you don't gotta like it if you don't like it you just don't like it you can't force it just to run around saying hey it's no god cooks perfect album that's not the way things work you know at least mm-hmm. on this show. Out there in the world, I can't vouch for that world. They're crazy out there. But here, Mules and Mel, we don't lie. And while this did go up, can't give it the seven minus. It didn't six go minus. up for me, man. It went from a flat seven, which it's always been, to a seven minus. And yeah, I think I know why that is. I'm just going to have to get it out of the way right now. And it's yep. going to become a constant throughout this review. Yep. I'm highly annoyed by his singing. You were telling me on the phone earlier. This... Uh, he goes from like, you know, this kind of just like Rolls Royce brake lights, you know, which is his so own thing. In the morning, but the plug come late night. Rolls Royce yeah. brake lights. <laughs> Woke up in the morning, but the plug come. It's very labored. We are, the plug. We are. Oh, then yeah. then when he gets into the J. Cole. A lot of and Drake. And yeah, Drake. And Drake. I mean, yeah. we're. we're Listen, we're on a Rock Marciano produced album from an artist who, let's face it, I'm going to get this out of the way now, too. This guy is a Pusha T, Hell Hath No Fury, We Got It For Cheap, Volume 2 era uh, tribute act. He... And he, But okay. he's also <laughs> kind of thinks he's a Max B tribute act, but he's interpolating Drake and J. Cole. I'm sorry. Uh, not only am I somewhat irritated... There's a lack of immersion happening here from the get go. Um, okay. I almost have to say at this point, this guy's a good promo, but I can tell he's cutting a promo. I don't buy that this is him. That's a, okay, right? When Pusha right. T, the on, conviction, uh, the yes, convi- I, I'm not when, saying he's not convicted, but it feels more so like an act or a put at, on than at just times. Like yes, at times the conviction almost feels like a performance to me. Whereas if I'm going and thinking back to We Got It For Cheap, Hell Hath No Fury, Label label Limbo era Pusha T, or just Re-Up Gang era in general, I don't feel that performance coming through. I feel there's a level of, uh, there's a level of self-awareness, but there's also a level of authenticity. Here, I feel like the self-awareness is almost too high. Like, okay. I yeah. feel like we're writing stuff to like this is Mool's bait almost. Where where the originals like Pusha T and like Rock Marciano, where they were 
blazing a new trail, you know, paving oh, new God, ground, dude, inventing wanna, these characters. You want to talk about really what like has not worked well on this album in terms of this last week? Uh, what's that? In the last three months, we did the Shaboing Boing Classic Reloaded Review. <laughs> and, like, I was expecting this review to be Shaboing Boing Part 2, the Patreon files, <laughs> until okay. I actually listened to the album again this week. And I'm like, we can't just Shaboing Boing it like we did it with Rock Marciano, because these bars, when we're talking about, when we're comparing it to We Got It For Cheap Era Pusha T or Reloaded Mossberg era Rock Marciano. I'm sorry, it is just not up to that standard, okay? <laughs> it is just not up to it. I feel him trying to get up to that standard, and trying is good. I think we shouldn't knock people for trying. But there's a sense of a lack of immersion and a sense of performance here. And he's I'm sure you're thinking, what's wrong with performance? Like, I mean, you know, G-Unit soldier uh, rhetoric aside, I like Rick Ross. He's performing. Why Why am I not knocking him for performing? Well, I mean, that's like saying Undertaker is a character. Uh, for freaking Val Venus is a character. How come Val Venus didn't have a 30-year career? It's He's aware that he's in a lineage of a type of rapper. And plays yes. into it. And that's kind and that of, makes we just did this special. Benny the Butcher first listen. And like, that's kind of my knock on Benny the Butcher too. It's like, well, there's too see, much was... self-awareness of like walking in the shadows of 97 Hove where it's just like, all right, dude, like I would just rather listen to what you're walking in the shadows of at that point. I was going to save this for later, but I'll just tell you now the difference between the reason why Stove God Cooks is better to me than Benny the Butcher. This is coming off the Griselda or the, the, the Benny the Butcher first listen we did, and this applies to all Griselda. Why Stove God Cooks over somebody like Benny the Butcher? Because Funnier. Stove God Cooks to me, because they're both, Would you you would say that Stove God's a, a Coke rapper, right? I mean, his name is Stove God Cooks. Yeah, he's definitely a Coke rapper. He's um, a Coke rapper. So he's so a co rapper he and himself. he's a co rapper and then somewhat lifestyle rapper adjacent when we're talking about, you know, some of the fly bars on here, which are almost reminiscent of like the lifestyle music that like a smoke dessert currency dabble in. Yeah. The reason why I prefer this is because both Benny and Stove God dabble in jargon related to drug dealing. But yes. here's the thing. While Benny's jargon takes me out of it, it's like, well, bro, it's it's not his fault that I don't sell drugs. But it's like, I don't sell drugs. So this means nothing to me. Stove God is more colorful, and his jargon yes. is intertwined with humor and references that I understand. Yeah, I the think humor, I mean, that's a big part of it. and unexpected. Because Benny the Butcher, I think, comes off more authentic, less performative sure. than Stove I'll God give, I'll give him that. But... Like, I don't, I don't lack, it doesn't lack immersion for me in that sense. I believe what Benny the Butcher is talking about. I just, I don't care because it's so self-serious. This, right? you know, even though I was saying, like, he wears a lot of his influences on his sleeve, I appreciate a rapper with a sense of humor. Stove God has a good sense of humor as a rapper. His delivery, which sometimes... You know, he could take a lot of like beats in between his bars. Like he lets some of his bars really breathe on these beats. And I think in terms of, you know, his style of rapping and stuff like that, it's definitely more like there's more showmanship and punchiness in the style of rapping than like someone like a Benny the Butcher. And we're only bringing him up, I think, as a... um, comparison because we just did that first listen and again the only reason i'm even thinking about reloaded right now other than the fact that you know rock did produce this project is we just came off of listening to it and i remember how you know like when i listen to doom or rock for example i get really caught up in their use of language and i don't Mm -hmm. think that that like that's not what i get out of this i've decided this is a different kind of you know um appeal i would say right so this beat um 
I like this beat, you know, with like dramatic sort of horns, like boom, boom, boom. And then, you know, I don't like the singing. The <laughs> Rolls Royce brake lights, the plug I just want to be, wanna be successful. It's you like just very be, you referential just to be? modern songs, which like, you know, I mean, it... It's, I don't, it I don't hate off. it. I also don't care for it. I don't like it. It's corny to me. It's like, dude, you're supposed to be like, I don't know, like you're portraying yourself as this like drug lord type of guy. Like, what are you doing this? I just want to be. I just want to be. Like, that's like some blog era shit. The blog, what are you, the blog era pusher? <laughs> I mean, come on. This is this is ridiculous. So, Pusha, I don't think would have interpolated these. Uh, no, hell no. And he didn't. If you go back, you know, he wasn't that kind of rapper. And I think that, like, he got his sense of humor off in different ways. His conviction came across, but it came across less performative. Um, however, I will say, I like Stove's rapping on this song. It's similar to the majority of the rapping that he does on this project. I like the beat. The singing just pisses me off. That's it. <laughs> like, everything is uh... solid on here, with the exception of the all the singing and the singing is like, it's just so labored sounding. Uh, if I may interject, I just want to say, you know, I never sang on reasonable doubt. I, I didn't do things like it was a different time for sure. But, you know, I think he was singing on here to kind of throw me off the trail. You know, it's harder to, to build a case when he's doing things I didn't do, you know? Right. It's J Cole, J uh, signed to rock nation. Oh, yeah, he's still signed to the to the label, but, you know, I let him operate independent of everything I do. You know, he's a young boss, a young mogul himself. You know, he doesn't need me. I told him from the beginning of his career, you know, I can't always be around and babysit you like right. this. Right, there were know? all those jokes about how he never, you never took pictures with him or whatever. Uh, Jay, let me ask you this. Do you think he'd be okay with this interpolation? Do you think he would, uh, do you think he would find it, you know, on a song? talking about drugs and stuff like that. You think J. Cole would be okay with that? Well, you know, that's a great question. I think I think he would personally, but that's because he hasn't grown enough yet. You know, like I right. said, he's a young mogul. I'm, I've been a mogul for a very long time. So, you know, I can recognize when somebody's trying to get over. You know, he's a very nice guy. That's why I signed him. But he might not have the business acumen that I do, you know. So that's why I'm here to, to pave the way and, and be the example for the younger generation. You know, when you got to sue somebody, you can't really show mercy. You yeah, know, the, the business sure. room is a lot like the streets. All right. Uh, that, that'll All be All these years and he still just like won't embrace j cole i just <laughs> like what's the like why so hesitant you know like he's clearly proven a, yeah he isn't the successor he's to a, Nas that everyone is thought. a oh that's what it is well the, i just figured it out thing, he, jay it's, like, it's the nice thing isn't so it's it? like a Brett and sean situation no, basically. no it's nothing like that you know i First of all, I don't think he's as good as Nas, and that's not a knock on him, but you know, Nas was Nas. I'm Jay. I'm Hove. And that's cold. You know, it's a cold world. It's Dreamville's things like that. You know, it had nothing to do with the Nas comparisons. Yeah. Jay, could you name all the here. members of Dreamville? Sure. You know, Cole, of course, he's at the top. You know, this it's they got that one kid. He's nice. He wears a he wears a bandana. He kind of looks like a woman. Uh What's his name? Jod. Jod. He's a... Well, it's J-I-D. Or Jed, however you want to pronounce it. Of course, you know, it's open It's open to interpretation. I'm sure he, he built that into his name, you know. And, and that's that's Dreamville right now, you know. And they're really running Just things. those two guys? Is there, is there more? Well, there's Boss. You know, he was a big cast from WWE. That was his... Roommate in college. Who? It's from WWE. Big Cats. Oh, that's the that's the wrestlers. <laughs> I seen I seen some of that. You know, I figured I would. I I, I contemplated getting in the business. You did you know, something I, at the uh, what was it? The ninety nine VMAs with Steve Austin. He presented you an award, didn't he? Yeah, well, you know, that's maybe? when wrestling was hot. It was as hot as me. So, you know, we had to collaborate, but they're right. not doing too well these days. You know, I have Vince McMahon's phone number. I'm sure we could we could do something on the business side of things at, at any time, but I'm kind of waiting for him to, 
you know, pardon my French, but he's got to get his shit together, you know? <laughs> sure. I mean, he, he's not wrong there. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah. Watch. Well, let me find out. Jay knows more about the business than he leads on, you know? I know a lot about the business. I'm a business man. <laughs> okay. So just keep listening. You're going to find out more intel for your lawsuit. For sure. So, yeah, you know, he, he just, it's stove guy cooks on this, on this, on this record specifically, you know, I couldn't put it over because I don't dislike the beat, but, but like it kind of, there's good vocal, like female vocal sample chops in the beat that I like. Um, that, yeah, you know, I usually like stuff like that. I but, dig it. You know, I dig the rapping. It's just like that singing is, it's irritating. Is it not? It doesn't work. It doesn't work for me. It doesn't work. It doesn't irritate me, but it falls flat. Like it, it doesn't used do to not irritate me. I just used to definitively like not care about it. Just, That's it, not right. That's where I'm it at. wasn't. It wasn't where I, it wasn't what I was coming to these songs for this week. I've decided, no, this shit's annoying. Okay. Yeah. I, uh, <clears throat> I think, and this may be a take, the rapping gets better and better as the album progresses to me. Like it's, I'm not saying it starts whack cause it's not yes, whack. Yes. And no, I think it starts strong. Then I think okay. the album hits a patch of a, a real rough patch. And then after it recovers from that rough patch is the best rapping on the album. Got it. Okay. Uh, he ends strong. That's for sure. He definitely uh, ends strong. Definitely. The final, like, Whatever sins took place on this album makes up for in the last three songs on this album. Three, four songs Facts. for sure. Facts. Absolutely. So, yeah, I mean. Uh, but it's yeah, still, like you, you said, know, it's, it's a seven minus for me. It's it's still like, it's still hanging in there. But I'm listening to this in the context of the album. I'm not running to listen to Rolls Royce brake lights for any other reason. than I'm turning on this album and I'm letting it rock. Yeah. Is that a yeah. problem? Uh, well, I mean, it may be a problem for the final rating, but, <laughs> you know. What do you mean? The final rating is a seven minus. It gets t- counted no, as a takeaway. No, the album. Away. The album's on. The album rating. Fuck it. <laughs> Jesus. Fuck. Um, yeah. You got any Here's lines you want to point out in particular on this one? Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, you know, like you said, he, he raps, you know, and so the rap, the rapping doesn't ever whack. Outside of one track he, on here. He raps, but the bars almost don't read in, in certain cases. There are a few instances I'd like to point out later on, but the bars don't necessarily read as stunning as like on paper as the Marciano bars. A lot of it really is in not what he's saying, but how he's saying it and the in like the inflections he's using and stuff like that. Um and it's like a double edged sword. Like sometimes it feels like it's too much. And sometimes it feels like, no, this is, you know, this is what he's supposed to like. I'm always knocking people for being meat and potatoes and not having any like distinct characteristics and having any showmanship and whatever. But like, you know, and everyone's got their influences. I mean, even, uh, got it for cheap. How half no fury push a T was saying he was channeling Biggie. So, you know, there you can be like influenced by people not wear it so hard on your sleeve and do your take, have your own take on it, essentially like do your own thing with it. But yeah, I think he's, I think he's good on this song. Um, To me, he is a slightly less violent, much more shrill and animated rock Marciano. To me, I can't compare him to rock Marciano because he doesn't have, he doesn't enjoy playing with vocabulary the way that rock does simple as yeah, that he doesn't he doesn't really the word slow down play, and work a hold as much either the <laughs> wordplay does like, not really come in as a factor here for me in it's fact, there he's it's he there takes so but, much he, he's like jeezy he takes like so much time in between bars he i think he just he's more like jeezy than rock marciano actually I don't. I don't think it's that much space between the bars. I In think, the way that he's. I mean, he's not. He, to me, with the exception there's of there's less subtlety. Here, 
in his in his uh he's less clever there's less subtlety there's far less wordplay going on like i don't get the sense that he's in this to play with words and manipulate language i think he's here to perform and be an entertainer well i, I get mean, more like... of like a jeezy rick ross push a t vibe from this guy and, and it makes sense because than jeezy and, and you know the funny thing is is that he's kind of pivoting into that now because the last thing I heard from him was a song with French Montana that was completely, like, it just sounds like any other song. You know, it's not like this kind of production is going to carry through in his career. Then at that point, the Rock Marciano comparisons completely fade away. What's Rock Marciano about a guy rapping over a Murda Beats track with French Montana, you know? Um, what's Rock Marciano about Stove God Cook's verse on the Benny the Butcher album that we just did? I just mean in terms of like you know the punchlines and things, not because yeah, Rock is more he savors it more. Does that make sense? Look, I just I just can't even put them in like literally. I mean, rock- they have very similar moments when it comes to flows too. We'll get into it, but yeah, I mean. I, I'm, I'm not will, saying I, he I is. I can't put Rock them Marciano. in the same category, especially saying. after this week. The contrast between them coming off of that reloaded review is obvious to me. Um, what can I say? Like, uh, uh, like we're literally discussing like elite versus not elite, in my opinion. I mean, we are, but I don't want to bury the guy on the first track. <laughs> you well, know, like, is he elite? <laughs> It's just uh, no, he, I don't consider him to be. So elite. why? What are we doing? We just did moment of truth. I thought we don't lie anymore. We never lied in the first place. Okay, well, and, I, I and, I'm, and I'm not lying here. I'm just saying he reminds me of Rock Marciano. I'm not saying he is Rock Marciano because there are differences. I think you but take those Rock Marciano beats away from him, and there's no comparison. Yeah, maybe. Um. Yeah, look, there are lines on here. All right. You know, uh, like I said, I don't know about drugs, but I know you got collage work. His shit mixed with his shit mixed with they work. My shit is Cinderella slipper. That's a way of saying my drugs are unique. You know, and that's the butcher, thing about I don't rap think is like trying to find all of the different ways to say the same thing. Yeah. You know, and I mean, he's he's good enough at that throughout yes. this album. So. Um, and hey, listen, you said you don't want to shit on him to start the first song. He chose to make Rolls Royce Brake Lights the first song. He could have opened with my favorite song on the album. I wouldn't be talking so much shit. Um, yeah, uh, let me see. Well, it's just, uh, yeah, light skin bass runner. I'm Derek Jeter. That's a bar. It's definitely a bar. Uh, walk a nigga down like Herschel, you know, Herschel Walker. Uh, Is that I a good he, line? It's a decent one. Say it's it again. Wordplay. He said, uh, close casket and hearse you, work you, walk a nigga down like Herschel. Well, the hearse you, Herschel, like the, the scheme itself, sure, but like walk you down like Herschel? Walk a nigga down, you know, you got to. Walker, Walker, you, you know, don't, don't, don't undersell it, you know, or undersell it. He's a coon. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, he got his Bible stuff mixed up, by the way. He said, Peter on the water, nigga, patience is the virtue. I look, I'm a heathen, so, you know, don't quote me, but I'm pretty sure that whole Peter on the water thing was about having faith, not about patience, but I don't know. Anyway, six plus. It's it's uh he he's getting warmed up on here. It's a warm up record for me. Like the raps aren't all the way there in like peak form. Like we'll hear later, the beats. I I'm good on this, and I've always been good on this historically. So this not much has even, changed. This isn't even. I would put him in Mules as being too kind. I think. <sighs> Look, you're sitting in to take notes for your doomed lawsuit, not to contribute analysis. That's Jesse's job. A doomed okay. lawsuit. Well, did I lose my lawsuit against uh, Diamond Dallas Page? <laughs> yeah, you did, actually. <laughs> 
I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, why would you even uh, pull that out if you didn't know if you won the lawsuit or not? Oh, he doesn't know anything. I've been saying this for God knows how long. Um, I guess he just no, knows how to rap. We, That's you know it. What That's happened. What no, no, I remember. I lost the law. Lo- well, we don't like to say lost. I received an unfavorable outcome on the lawsuit. <laughs> and uh, what had happened was then myself and Mr. Page, we actually, you know, we spoke. We we spoke and we said kind of like what I'm about to do with Dame. You know, we came to an agreement about certain things and about, about you know, the di- me throwing the diamond up. Okay. Uh, anyway. I got a lot of respect for the wrestlers. No, you don't. Um, is there anything else here? Uh, Sounds like no. <laughs> yeah. I'm guessing no. Okay. Well, he talks about walking on water again. On the uh, song. He's like, I walk on Coke water later on in the song. That's not a bar. All right. I didn't say it was. I'm just saying he said the same. He talked about walking on water twice on this. Well, good. Six plus for oh, recycling flat. material. Uh, seven minus, rather. All right. Um, we're, we're off to two. a slightly, slightly rocky, but not a complete uh, failure of a start. <laughs> okay. I mean, are you referring to us or Stove God? No, Stove God. We're we're oh. doing what we got to do. We're <laughs> we're fucking getting surgical and making people uncomfortable. Well, that is what we do. You guys got to stop I... feeling weird, like weird attachments to these albums, man. These weird, uh... like like they're like they're living, breathing entities that you're friends with. All right, just relax. It's going to be okay. All right, surgery number one, out the way. Six, what do you get? Flat six, seven minus. That's what it was. It's just like taking off a band aid. All right. No, I don't even know why I'm talking like this. You're on Patreon right now. None of the people listening to this are those kind of uh, the overly emotional rab listeners that I'm referring to. Yo, it's Mel from Rap Rankings. To hear the full episode this clip comes from and all other Patreon-exclusive content, visit patreon.com slash raprankings.